uh, just hell of a college basketball game. Uh, I've been I've been in a, associated with the sport since 2000 um, when, when I first got to college, and um, been a part of a few games uh, that had the you know all the ele elements of you know, sort of a classic, so to speak. Uh, and that one certainly ranks up there, and, and it's really unfortunate for our guys and our fans who, who showed up here in a tremendous way. Uh, that we came up short, so disappointed for for them, both our players and our fans, uh, because everybody put so much effort and energy into the day. And uh, whether it's going to be the last time we play them here, who knows? But um, I want our guys to leave here with their health heads have high, high because it's not easy to do what they done, which is continue to. You know, when on November sixth you lose your first game and basically people throw your season into the toilet bowl. Um, to show up in this league as hard as it is and keep competing the way they do. Um, but you gotta give credit to OU. Obviously they made a, made a tough shot at the Brooklyn play and, and they get out of here with a win. Uh, obviously having a really good year. So um, my job is to show up on Monday and make sure we're doing whatever we can to make our team better for the last few games we have in the regular season and see where we can go once we get to uh, Kansas City. Mike, the final play in regulation, what were you guys trying to get? And was Hicklin three kind of a last option? Yeah. No, was, we had three options. Uh, one was uh, trying to get to the rim. Uh, with, you know, with the short time, obviously getting closer to the rim, you can try to get one tipped in. Knowing that they were going to probably switch, so we tried to run the kind of a uh, misdirection a little bit. So we sent, um, we sent Javon up the floor and Hicklin to a little bit of a slip. And we got it, I mean, got wide open. <laughs> Obviously, I, I think he rushed it, didn't, didn't take as much time as maybe he could have. Now again, point four, it's hard to kind of decipher in the moment, but, you know, missed it. Um, so then we got one of the three options that we wanted, which was, you know, him coming off the screen and, and getting a look from three, or, you know, we had Daly with an option to go to Ramo, John Michael, or Javon, um, kind of out on the perimeter as well. It seemed like Javon after the game was pretty down. Is he taking this harder no one missed the free throw late in the game? I'm sure. I mean, he's a competitor. Um, you know, he knows that, um, you know, he didn't lose the game, but the game is there for him to win. You know, um, now, there's some time, so some, something can happen, but the game is there for him to win, and he takes a lot of pride in, in being in those moments. And uh, I'm sure he feels bad that he didn't deliver for his team because that's what he cares about most. But, you know, I like that we got him there. You know, uh, we actually tried in the last possession of overtime to put him in position again to drive it downhill. We got a good look at the rim. I, I thought he got hit, but it wasn't called. But you know, I thought we put him in another position to maybe get get there again and, and maybe go up three. Uh, but those are, that's the game. You know, you live and die with the results when you put the guys in position to do things um, that you practice. We practice it all the time and so our guys for the most part, we got the shots we wanted offensively. Uh, we got the looks from the guys that we wanted. The offense wasn't really the issue for either team. It was really more, we couldn't get enough stops. Uh, and really to start the second half, kind of set a bad tone for us and kind of gave them some momentum. How impressed were you with Eric Daly today and the way that he was able to uh, guard and also be able to score? Yeah, I mean, you know, these guys I've known for so long. Uh, I'm not gonna say I'm not impressed by his play, but I. I expect him to play well. I mean, I really do. I mean, so um, we're, we're playing him a little bit untraditional, probably a little bit different than he even envisioned himself playing uh, when he got here. But it's, this gives us the best chance to have consistent results offensively, especially when Garris is in foul trouble the way he was today. Uh, he took advantage. I mean, it wasn't just a scoring. He made some great passes, uh, made some great reads, and the short roll situation. Um, so uh, I'm just glad that, you know, the season is hard for young guys, and uh, he's been through the peaks and valleys. Today he was up, and hopefully he can build on the momentum that he's got today by coming in on Monday and having a really good practice so he can prepare to get ready to play as well as he can uh, on Wednesday. What's the kind of emotional roller coaster like for a coach whenever you send your team out for one last defensive possession? You see the play break down. I imagine your hopes go up a little bit. What's kind of the emotional roller coaster? Yeah, I mean, you know, that is, in essence, when you talk about the life you choose, <laughs> right? And I love what I do, right? Not, not, but, you know, as the ball's going in the air, a lot, a lot of times it's determined whether you're a good coach or bad coach. <laughs> the ball hits the back rim and goes in, the 
it's a totally different feeling, right? The other team feels bad, you know, we feel better. Um, but I wouldn't trade it. I love what I do. I'm a competitor at my core. It's who I am. It's who I've always been. It's why I've had whatever semblance of success I've had to this point. Um, and it's what I hope will continue to drive me to get better at everything uh, that I give to this program. And so as hard as it is to accept the ball going in for them, I know that's part of the game. Um, so we play really good defense. I don't know if that was their plan. I can't, I'm not in their huddle. Um, I don't know if they wanted him with the ball. I don't know if there was another option, but I, I felt like we guarded really well. And they took a shot that was contested. I mean, you know, it's, you, you don't really throw your hands up, but you, you really, what better can you do on that possession? What you do is you hope that maybe the last possession, you get to the free throw line, the end of regulation, you make the free throws, and it doesn't come down to a ball going in or not on the defensive side, on the game, on the day where a lot of balls went in on both sides, especially in the, late in the game. I was watching the last few minutes of Gavin it, it, when the time expired on half, second half, he says, this is a high-end basketball game. And then I'm like doing a deeper dig here. And he's like, ah, the turnover numbers are low. The shooting percentages are good. And yet there was defense where I just, you know, so this was a really beautifully played game. I mean, it, you know, you're, it, you're sickened by the outcome. Sure, sure. But, but I mean, the, the quality of the game was – yeah, I agree. I mean, you know, there's nothing really more to add. I mean, I think both teams would have rather got a little bit more stops and the shooting percentages weren't as high as they were, particularly in the second half and overtime. Um, and, you know, but I do think that the responses, right, this is what this is what you work for and play for to, is to be in a game like this. And uh, like I said, I'm disappointed for our fans because I wanted them, you know, if this is the last time we play them in this building to walk away with better taste. Uh, their mouth, they deserved it because of the way they showed up and supported these kids, particularly in the season that hadn't gone as well as anybody had hoped. Um, but we need to continue to build on it. We got some time left to salvage, you know, but 